Welcome to Dr. Piercy's using the JSTL with Eclipse. In this video, you'll see how to obtain the JAR files needed to work with the JSTL in Eclipse. You'll learn how to quickly add these JAR files to your Eclipse projects. There's a couple things you need to know before I show you where you can get the JSTL JAR files. First, you can get them by visiting the official site at jstl.java.net. We're going to get two JAR files. One contains the tags, and the second one contains the implementation. Here we see the homepage for the jstl.java.net website. Here we see the JSP Standard Tag Library project page located at jstl.java.net. You can find links here about getting started, getting work on a project, or just getting the files. For now, click on Download in the center of the page. Recall that we need to get two files, the JSTL API and the implementation file. First, let's get the API file. Here, we need the regular JAR file for this, so let's just scroll down until you see the file with the title Javax dot servlet dot jsp dot jstl dash api dash one point two point one dot jar I'm going to click on this to save it and then I'm going to browse to a folder that I created called jstl so that I can save the jar once that file is saved I can hit the back button to return to the tag library and click on the implementation page. Here we're going to need to scroll down to where we see javax servlet.jsp.jstl-1.2.1.jar. dash one point two point one dot jar. Right click and save this link. I'm going to put that in my JSTL folder as well and hit save. At this point, I have the two JAR files I need to use the JSTL in my Java Dynamic Web applications. Now let's look at adding the JSTL JAR files to Eclipse with Tomcat. First thing to know is that the Tomcat server does not include the JSTL by default. This means we have to add the JARs with two steps. First, we'll need to import the two JAR files into the web content webinf lib folder in our Eclipse Dynamic Web Project. And then for any JSP files of our project, we'll need to include the tag lib tag. So here I am in Eclipse, and I'm ready to add the two downloaded JAR files to my application. I've created a Dynamic Web Project, and I simply called this one JSTL underscore JAR underscore demo. Notice I've also included an index.jsp page. We'll use this in a moment to test whether or not we've got these working files in our project. Now for any project where you're going to want to use JSTL, you will need to import the JAR files. The proper place is in Web Content, in the Web Int folder, and further into the Lib folder. I'm going to right click on the Lib folder. I'm going to select Import I'm going to choose File System. Select Next. Now we need to browse for the folder. In my documents, you can browse for the JSTL folder. Notice I have three files. I want to get the two JAR files imported into my lib. I'll select those and hit Finish. Now if I expand lib, I see that those are loaded. Finally, we want to test whether or not those files are included in the project and that the project recognizes them. The first step is to make sure that each JSP page accesses the JSTL jars. We do that with the tag lib tag. I'll make some room. The tag lib starts with our angle bracket percent at symbol. So the delimiters are just like the page delimiters shown above. Next, we specify the tag lib tag. We can then specify the prefix attribute and if we're getting the core library we can use C. You would replace this for any of the other libraries in the tag library that you want to use 
And finally, we need to use the URI attribute and point it to the, the document definition at HTTP colon slash slash Java dot sun dot com slash JSP slash JSTL slash core. Now we're ready to test whether or not we're actually accessing the core library correctly. Let's do this with just the code for a simple for loop. I'll add a headline just so we know that we're getting the right results in our browser. Call it JSTL test. For a loop we can use the C for each. I'll have the variable I. I'll start that equal to 1. I'll end at 5. So we'll go through the numbers 1 through 5 and we'll step by 1. During each phase of the loop we'll simply print to the response the current value of the variable i. So I'll use my expression language access to the variable i. Finally, let's add a br tag so it does this on a separate line each. So if this works, what we should see is simply the headline JSTL test and then we'll see the numbers 1 through 5 printed just below one line per number. I'm going to right click, build my project, right click, run as on server. It appears that I have a successful test. So my core library tags are added correctly into my Eclipse project. Here viewing the source we see exactly what was printed at those five lines. For more information about the concepts discussed in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy Production.